like the eagle watching the direction of the wind and then it spreads its wings that's what we call soaring it does not fly the eagle soars the parable of the good samaritan luke chapter 10 let's start from verse 25 jesus is teaching now and he's revealing to the disciples showing them the system of the kingdom he says behold a certain lawyer so the 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 the, the discourse starts with a lawyer coming to make inquiry he stood up and tempted him saying master what shall i do to inherit eternal life he said unto him what is written in your law how readest thou and he answered and said thou shalt love the lord thy god with all your heart your soul your strength and your mind and then love your neighbor that's where the trouble began when he began to talk about another person love your neighbor as yourself he gives you a standard to loving your neighbor that means before you love anyone you have to look at yourself the way you love yourself that means that when you do not love people is a reflection of a perception you have about yourself it says love your neighbor as yourself and he said unto him thou hast answered right this do and thou shalt live next verse but he willing to justify himself said to jesus and who is my neighbor story story let's go on now jesus is about to teach i love the way jesus you know he would answer you in a very intelligent way he would say now come with me he would journey through your mind and make sure that he explains to you in a way that leaves you convicted and jesus answered and said a certain man now usually parables do not have the names of people they it, it just creates the personalities and then the lessons to learn except for the scenario of lazarus it was a parable uh, well theologians argue that it was an event that really happened but then uh, it's also classified as a parable and jesus answered and said a certain man went down from jerusalem to jericho follow the story now and fell among thieves so this had nothing to do with the man's carelessness he was a man returning from a journey and he fell among thieves the bible says they stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed leaving him half dead and by chance there came down a certain priest now priests were after the order of aaron they were descendants and sons of aaron they were apportioned now the the priesthood had three categories there was the high priest then they were the priests that served and then they were the levites who were descendants of levi are we together now and so he's saying now that a certain priest went down his way and when he saw that man wounded so that was a pastor that was a man of god an apostle a prophet he was on his way to church and he saw a man wounded beaten half dead and the bible says he passed by the other side and was on his way going likewise the levite the levites are like workers in church they help in the keeping of the tabernacle they help with all kinds of activities of deaconry activities uh, all the auxiliary activities that support the work in the house and here comes a levite a worker trained loves god committed to a church and when he was at the place he looked at him a man do you think the man half dead would just be watching them i'm sure he would beckon on them and say please what can you do and they left him said no 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 i need to run to church and they looked at him and passed by the other side 33 but a certain samaritan now you have to understand that in those days the jews hated the samaritans they were not they were they were arch enemies they were rivals they would have nothing to do with themselves a certain samaritan as he journeyed he came where he was when he saw him hallelujah he had compassion everybody say compassion he had compassion and then next verse he went to him and bound his wounds did you know that was a risk number one it was in the night number two if someone caught him doing that he would believe he was the one who harmed that man and kill him this was a risk this man was taking his life binding his wounds pouring oil and wine and set him on his own donkey and brought him to an inn and took care of him that man suspended his journey 
he suspended he forgot about himself to attend unto a man that was wounded verse 35 and on the morrow that means he spent the entire night there an extra cost that was not initially planned he took two pens and gave them to the host and said unto them take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more when i come again that means i will still come back i will come back and ensure that this man was all right he says i will repay ye. which of these three thinkest thou was the neighbor to him that fell among the thieves 37 and he said he that showed mercy on him he that showed mercy on him now here is the instruction jesus said unto him go return with this revelation and reproduce that act in your life i have taught you something about living that you borrow from the samaritan and that you go and begin to show seeds of mercy do likewise that means your neighbor is whoever needs your mercy anyone at all your relatives whoever it is now this looks like a very simple subject but it is powerful in the sight of god because every time you show mercy you also show gratitude it's, it's like communion you are you are reminding god that you are conscious of what he did to you through the substitutionary sacrifice of his son in the cross the parable of the samaritan go and do likewise to plant seeds of mercy go and do likewise more than anointing more than diligence more than faith and you know we live in a context today that is so self-centered we live in a context today that is so individualistic provided it does not come near your door it's none of your business are we together now and that is not the culture of the kingdom the bible says that we must go out of our way to sow seeds of mercy there are many people right now who are programming woes and disaster to themselves and their children did you know that there are people today in this nation who may not necessarily have any investments they may not even be successful personally but they took the risk of spending their youthful days sowing seeds of mercy and they are ripping off that harvest today the seeds of mercy the seeds of mercy that you find lives that need the mercy of god and you are there for people you help them stand you help them know god you help them love god let me tell you not everyone will be ungrateful you will find somebody who will remember you he will meet you and say 20 years ago you insisted i told you i did not have transport to go to church you said it's not a problem took me out for lunch you made sure i got born again you followed up with me and now look what i've become and the person will vow and say provided i'm alive you will never beg for food again the parable of the good samaritan that it is not enough in the sight of god that you are a priest it is not enough in the sight of god that you are a levite did you know that some of the most anointed people some of the greatest preachers around the world sincerely speaking and respectfully so when it has to do with these issues of mercy and kindness and love some of the intelligent ceos some of the great people we are great in terms of our field our craft but once it has to do with human relations it's almost zero so you can have a preacher who can preach can cast out devils can raise the dead but after church he's walking and he sees a faithful member who had been cleaning the church and does not even bother this man is about to trek back home he can stop in his front and buy something worth one thousand and cannot say take a hundred naira don't worry your faith is working one day you will have a car let me encourage you listen edge yourself in the history of people let them rise knowing you were there don't come into their future and expect to be featured in their life if you were not there when people were at their down times don't expect to be invited at the table of greatness are you getting this now there are many of us today by the grace of god it is not really your certificate that will feed you it is not really 
um, your intellectual investment as important as that is as the days go by you will find out that you want to take your child to a school and you look at the proprietor and he says I know you remember in 1999 somebody who was crying one day and you say you are the one he said this is the Lord's doing your child will become head boy head girl doesn't matter whether they are taking first position or not they they become an eternal excellency because of something you did listen i want you to look back today if nobody can remember you as they are rising is proof you are taking a risk you are sitting on a time bomb you must find people there are many of our elderly people today in their old age they move around as though they are cursed and you are wondering what did they do with their youthful days who did you raise when you were director who did you lift every time god prospers you use your blessing to create the history of impact in the lives of people there are people who can never go down they've raised too many people to stop them from touching the ground again please listen to what i teach you in this conference it is the wisdom that makes for living in the cosmos the little children that we see and push today Tomorrow will be the ones to come and hold our hands. This individualistic living, I am happy, I have a job, I have this, I am comfortable. No, do not make the mistake of Esther. She was forgetting about the Jews and Mordecai warned her and says you are taking a risk. One day they will find out you are a Jew. And when they find out you are a Jew, you will not have any support system. Listen. The person you ignore today will become your strength tomorrow. You must sustain the intelligence. Use your strength and invest it in the future by showing mercy to people. After church, you are on your way going. You see someone trekking. You can pick the person. Oh, have you eaten? It doesn't have to be every day. Let me do something for you today. Who are you? You are a member of household of David. Yes. And you are playing a message now the message you are playing will make sense to the person because it's coming forth from a life that is true the purity of your christianity is affecting is making the person believe what he's hearing and you leave the person with an impression what is your name sir my name is john he will write it in a diary and pray every day and after 10 years do you know that i had the honor and the privilege my principal many years ago sir one of the people who gave me a foundation of godliness i had to find a way of looking for him i searched for him and made sure that i blessed him and i told him i said that they should tell him that by god's grace you have not seen anything provided i'm alive just know that you made a very wise investment in believing in me and trusting me be careful who you don't believe in because sometimes you will be taking a risk when you don't believe in people and they still succeed sometimes they will go out of their way to teach you a lesson that you may teach your children and your children's children this is what you get when you come to church the wisdom seeds of mercy many people you will be merciful to will not recognize you many of them will not even appreciate you many of them will trivialize your impact don't worry the seeds fell on different kinds of soil not every soil is a bad soil there will be a grateful mother there will be a grateful young lady there will be a grateful young man who will stand up one day and say i must do this is there any man in the house of saul that i may show kindness for jonathan's sake and that became the breakthrough of Mephibosheth. Let us make this sacrifice for the sake of our children and our children's children. That you may not have any naira and cobalt, dollar and pound, but you have the richness, the investment of a history that has lifted people. You cried with people when they cried. You were there when they lost loved ones. You didn't come asking questions. Where is your faith? No. You sit with them there and cry and say it's all right god will help you one day you will come out of this oh i lost my father i lost my mother and you run away and then when they make it you come and badge into their future no no blow 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 like a mighty wind 
Spirit of victory, cover us. Listen to me. Many of our loved ones today would have had opportunities to be wealthy, to be blessed, but they misused precious opportunities that God gave them to sow seeds of mercy. There are people today who cannot walk down the street with their heads lifted. You know why? Because they misused the access, the opportunity that God gave them to lift others. Someone came and said, please, can you help me in school? Please help me. My school fees, I love God. You can come and donate even a billion naira in church, which I commend. But then that person is your relative and saying, please, okay, don't give me the money. Give me a job to do. Let me walk. Say, no, get out of here. And because the same Lord is rich unto all, God will route another way. Then you find out, for instance, that your own children now don't turn out to be anything useful. And it's that same person who comes and is standing by you on the sick bed. And your life is full of memories of pain. Please do not die in pain. Don't go to your grave in pain because of unwise decisions. God is giving us wisdom this morning. Applicable wisdom. That as you step out of here, one day you can cook and just call everybody and say, you know what? I don't have the resources to do it every day, but I can do it once. And you, you know, people are so self-centered today, pastor, that anytime you are nice to people, they begin to suspect. There must be something. They ask, what are you looking for? That's how wicked and self-centered our world are. You want to be a Christian? It's not only by praying in tongues. You want to be a Christian? It's not only by priesthood, of preaching, of teaching, of cleaning chairs in the church alone. Wonderful. But something about your life, the seeds of mercy. I made up my mind that by the grace of God, I will fill my life experiences with being there for people, with raising people. Not because I'm looking for something in the future, but it is a beautiful way to live. To, to know that you were there when someone was crying. It was on your hands that their tears dropped. That you are there for them. And you know, let me say this respectfully. It's one of the blessedness of our foundations. Many of us grew up from families and religious contexts that they were not very open to the things of the spirit. But they will be there for you. Someone dies in one hour. You see people singing praise and worship songs to your house. They will sleep there. They will cry there. You will not even know who was who had the bereavement. But our generation today, the moment you lose your job, you lose whatever, everybody backs out. When God grants you breakthrough, here they come again. Where were the friends of Job? He was the richest man in the east. For a while they were there with him. And then eventually they left. And only his wife was there and Job prayed and prayed for his friends and God restored his fortune I think chapter 42 and verse 10 and there all those people began to come back again please be part of the history of people I give you a secret of living a fruitful life I show you an investment that does not fail invest in the life of people rising not people who have risen you are a man of God. Do not ignore the young people who are in your church. Those young people praying. They may make mistakes. It's better that they make mistakes in your lifetime. You are correcting them. You are seeing it there. Their pride, their foolishness, their zeal. You can call them and say, look, I love you, but it ought not to be so. Yes, the choir person is stubborn. Yes, the usher is not listening. It's better they make the mistakes in your lifetime. Are we together? learn this from jesus mighty jesus moj jesus comes to sit with little children and he says let the little children come to me there are adults that are hated by children because they have no sign of mercy they are anointed their ministries only to adults when children hate you it's a sign from god that something is really wrong with your life i'm telling you this because they have the purest of heart if a child runs away from you unnecessarily, go for a retreat. 
you would think i'm joking but what i'm saying is very very serious the purity of their heart something about you should draw them to you if children come here now they don't care who is preaching on stage they should be able to come and and hold you and hit you and you don't just hit them and say i'm serious i'm serving god you are like the priest and the levite how many people have we ignored in an attempt to serve god the parable of the good samaritan 